with the super flyweight title up for grabs on the 14th of December 2019. I met up with an old friend of mine who I haven't seen in the last 15 to 16 years. Leading up to the title fight, I have been given access to Casey, his trainers and those closest to him. With only a few weeks to go before the big night, I'm heading over to East London where after what feels like an eternity, I'll get to see a friend who I haven't seen since primary school. And after a quick catch up, it was time to prepare in order to see the big man in action. Up to today, Casey has had seven professional boxing fights, all of which he has been victorious. In preparation for his European title fight, professional boxer Lucian Reed is putting Casey through his steps in a closed door sparring fight. For me, this is the first time seeing a fight so up close and personal and I must admit the experience is quite overwhelming. Last one to go. And so far, there's so much speed, so much strength. And uh, it's those moments when all of a sudden you find him on top of your face. It just it feels unreal. Super unreal to have them right in front of you. So close to you. And you can see the emotion in the faces and the, and the sweat and the strength that they have to put into it. It's, it's incredible. Once the sparring was over, it was time to have a chat with Casey and the team. What a journey for you yeah. has been in the last 15 to 16 years. It's been a hell of a journey, man. It's been a roller coaster, up and down. Tell me a little bit about where we find ourselves. Yeah, man. How did this gym come about? It's even got your name on in the ring. Yeah. The ring box. Tell me about it. How did that come about? Um, you know, I was, I was, we were primary school together, you know. I was, I was quiet kid. And as year passed on, I hanged around with the wrong person and I was in the wrong places, causing trouble and all that. And family wasn't happy. My family was not happy with it. They told me to get yourself involved in our sports. And so I went to my local boxing gym, which was in Wolfhamstown. And that was the first time I ever put a pair of gloves. And first day I got into sparring and um, there was a kid, you know, it was his first day and I was my first day. He asked me, let's, let's spar. So I said, look, we didn't have no head guard. We just put on gloves and we just rocked and wore. And within four seconds, five seconds, even 10 seconds, I think was the first round. I just, without, you know, I opened my eyes, the guy was on the floor and uh, the coach was like, listen, you got something in you, yeah. you can fight. How did we meet? I remember, I remember there was a little bit of rivalry back in the day because it, it was, wasn't it? Because I remember he was coming up and I'm sure one of the boys went, oh, you're fighting Casey from Peacock. I was like, oh, yeah. who's that? He was like, mate, he's unbelievable. And when I got in there in the amateurs, he was, he was exactly the same how he is now. He's, he's elusive, he's powerful, he's, he's, um, he's very, very quick. So I had to up my game massively in the amateurs. And then I'm fortunate enough to have to spar him and he's um, helping him out for this championship fight for it he's got. So um, I'm, I'm just proud I know him because he's a lovely fella. And having all the support around you actually, the people have been behind you ever since the beginning. Uh, your community, the Avon community, your parents, your trainer. Mm. Does that add a, li a little bit of pressure on you to go and win and win, prove a point? Um, prove that they've been right to support you all along? You know, Boxing, I mean, the support means a lot, man. The support is everything. Um, the, right now, the reason I'm professional is because of the support. But um, I don't put the pressure. You know, when the dead, the fight comes, you can't put the pressure people because they're, they're not getting in the ring. They're, yeah, they, they buy the ticket. They're, they're there to get in the tent. You know, they're getting, a, they, they're getting a fight to watch. And at the end of the day, I can't put that pressure saying I have to win for them. I have to win for myself first. Every kid out in my boxing gym loves him. He comes into the gym, he gives them time, he speaks to them. He comes in with a little six-year-old, has a chat with him. We had a school 
Um, came here for ten, six weeks training, yeah. one hour a week for six weeks. He came and helped train them, give them a speech. You know, he's had an hard life. He's come for the streets. He was hard on the streets when he first came here. He's out of all that rubbish now. Yeah. But he can relate to the kids that are about now and hopefully help get them in the right direction. Listen, Casey for the sport of boxing is fantastic. Seven, seven brothers all together and then uh, four sisters. But um, not my older sister's in Canada now and, uh, you know, my brothers and the rest of the sisters, they all got kids. Like I said, my, my older sister's kids are older than me. Yeah. Older than me. The kids, they, 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 her kids are older than me. But, so your uh, nephews are older than yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Then they still call me uncle. <laughs> they <still laughs> call me uncle. Yeah. experience, wouldn't they? Yeah. So I'm like, like I said, I, I, you know, in my tradition in my country, uh, when a nephew have a kid, yeah. they have to call your granddad. They have to call their uncle or granddad. Their kids really? have to call your granddad. So I'm a granddad as well now, you know, wow. in a way. Yeah, so. how, how old are you now? 20, I'm 25, 25, 20, 26. 25 yeah. So then you're already being called a granddad. Yeah, I've got, I got a younger brother. I'm the second youngest in the family, so I've got a younger brother than me. And, you know, he's a granddad. <laughs> so in a way, you're like the baby of the family. He's the second in baby. That's a, yeah, in a way, yeah. Well, um, to think now I'm like his, his, his second father, to be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. he took a little bit of straightening out on things he does. And um, he had a lot of distractions in his life. Yeah. And hopefully we've, we've, we've crossed that hurdle and, and he's... And he's, oh, listen, there's no one more dedicated to him, than to boxing than him. But he just had a lot of distractions outside of the gym, yeah. which he's getting right now. Yeah, my journey, it's been, you know, we had, um, our journey was started from Afghanistan, where there was a war there and um, our family wasn't safe. So uh, my brother that was here, they, they were like, you lot need to get here. So we'll, we'll, we'll support you lot making your ways. And it was, it was a lot, it was a member of 30, 30 of our, Fate of our family member together. So we went to Pakistan. From Pakistan, we made our way all the way to here. We crossed many countries to get here. It was a long route. I think it took about a year and a half or two years. And eventually we got here. And, you know, the, um, we had an aim and a goal to get rich here. Although we went in Germany, Germany told us to stay there and all that. But because um, from, the, from the beginning, that when we start the journey, our mentality was to get here. And that was the goal. And, uh, you know, my family come from a background when they have something set in their mind, yeah. they have to do it. And, this was set in their mind, and um, our, our, um, you know my older brother was here, so we, we, it took us a long route. We went, we went through hells, man, to get to here, but we eventually got here, and um, you know, we've, you know, it's a land of opportunity, and we're looking for the best opportunity. And I think but, uh, being involved in the sports and boxing is it's a great opportunity when you use. At the end of the day, it was time to get a feel of what it's like to be in the ring. What happens on a fight night? On a fight night, okay, the first thing I do is when I walk, I just take my time, I walk up, and as soon as I get in the ring, this, oh, I always do this in all my fight. I, I, I go in on the road and I do this twice. I've noticed that, I've seen that. And, uh, I've seen it's just something that, I've, I've, you know, is, 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 that I have to do in my fight. I don't do it in training that much, but mainly in my fight, I have to. Then I just go through the, the ring, through the rope, you know, mentally say, this is my home. So I, I tell him that the ring belongs to me. So it's all mental thing you have to do go there and do all that stuff to make sure that the guy's fighting your fight. And yeah. then as soon as the both go in, you just be the dominant, just take over. I then returned to Casey's gym a day before his title fight to see what the mood was like before the main event. And I must admit, there was no air uh, of nerves in the room. Listen, Casey's gonna win tomorrow. You know, God willing, like, I don't believe there's any fighter in his weight division right now that has the skill set that he has, honestly speaking. Don't know what Mark can say, but can't wait till tomorrow. It was clear that this was a happy camp. <laughs> and just like that, the big night finally arrived. For me, this was what it was all leading up to. Seeing Casey up in that ring, I couldn't help but feel unease, nervous and worried. This was my first professional fight and seeing a childhood friend fighting for his title made it a little bit more overwhelming. 
Pedro Matos was a top opponent and round after round it became difficult to know who was in the lead. As the final rounds of the fight came, both fighters gave their absolute best as the final punches of the night were being thrown. In the end, the long-awaited moment arrived and the rest, well, the rest was history. And your winner, by unanimous decision, from Barkey!